Damn, bro. I don't even want to fade out the track, bro. Jeez. <laughs> we live. Oh, man. I'm really, really, really happy today, bro. And and, and besides just the, the the joyfulness of the music that I'm hearing right there, the for the people who are just cutting, seeing the cutting right here, yeah, I put on a hat and, a, and, a, and, my, and my signature shades here, courtesy of iReligion. But we back at it. It's your boy Friday, Ricky Dread. Another interview about to go down. Um, before I get into this, big salute to the sponsors. Um, Diamond Club, they got deliveries all over Canada and all over the GTA. You can find them on their Instagram page. Diamond Club underscore Canada. They got the best flower. They got the best edibles. They got the best pens. Anything you need. All right. Or you can find them on the Seven Days of Weed website. All right. Tell them tell them the boy Friday Ricky Dread sent you and they'll give you a little discount. You know what I mean? But I'm really, really happy today. I've been I've been working on this interview for a while. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and the reason being for me personally is I always like interviewing people who are on the come up. Mm -hmm. But I like interviewing people who I like their music. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And and we were talking off camera of some of the flack that I caught when I put you in my top 15 rappers in Toronto. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the comic gang was like, who's this gentleman? Right. So I'm going I'm to let the people know right now on the We Love Hip Hop podcast. With no further ado, mm -hmm. we have Toby in the motherfucking building. Jeez. My we were raised by immigrant parents who always gauged our parents. Dictated addiction, they wage war through the marriage. Conversations conflicting. My brother died of addiction. My brain thought of the worst genetic predisposition. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, thank you for coming through, bro. Bro, it's a pleasure, man. Thank you for having me. And you know, it's uh, ever since I saw that list, you know, I was like, you know what? Let me actually try and speak to some of these people mm -hmm. so that they get to know me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, even like just to touch on that quick fast, right? I put out a top 15 Toronto rappers list maybe about two years ago now. And I had your name somewhere in the top 10, I think in the top five possibly. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the reason I had you in there at the time is because low key mm -hmm. you had a lot of accolades then. Mm -hmm. Right. But I didn't think that everybody had known this mm -hmm. right and there's going to be some things that i want to bring up um like features that i heard you early in the game right. and different things like that so i want to get through a full history right you're in toronto yeah. right now you're you, you don't live in toronto anymore where are you living now uh i'm in la now you're living in la now yeah, right yeah. that how, what's that like as as far as like being a canadian now moving to la or not a canadian but a canadian citizen moving to la i mean I mean, I love Canada so much, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I come back here so often. Yeah. Um, but LA is just, there's a lot of action there, you know, mm -hmm. and I just get a lot of work done out there. Yeah, but, yeah. But as far as like my home and what I love, it's out here, it's yeah. Toronto, so. And, and the reason for your, your trip back to the six? Um, I'm just working on rehearsals right now because I have festivals this summer. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I'm doing Oshiega in Montreal. Dope. Um, I have a couple of festivals in the States too. And yeah, just doing my shows. And then, of course, I got to spend time with my family. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. And Toronto, summertime in Toronto is undefeated. Mm -hmm. there, in my opinion, there's no better place for the summertime than Toronto. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Act, it's just active. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, welcome back to the six. Yes, man. yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? Good looks, my guy. We're, well, we're, we're happy to have you back here. And, mm -hmm. and some of the things I even want to talk about before going back into the history, right? Last year, I was looking on your Instagram page. Mm -hmm. How did it feel last year getting that billboard in Times Square for the YouTube, um, for YouTube music? Yeah, man. Um, yo, it felt amazing. It felt amazing. You know, I, it was my first billboard in Times Square. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, a lot of emotions came over me, you know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. I was like, yo, I'm a, I'm a, I grew up in Brampton. I was born in Lagos, Nigeria. I didn't think I'd be over here in Times Square, you know what I'm yeah, saying? But, yeah. but it was written, you know what I'm saying? So it just, it just validates the journey. It just yeah. lets me know that, that I'm doing the right moves. I'm making the right steps to, you know, you know, reaching my eventual destination. Yeah, yeah. man. Yo, fam, I, I'm, I'm really proud of you, bro. I seen that yeah, and thanks. I was like, you know, just even going through your Instagram page and just different seeing your adventures, I'm like, this man is doing a lot of things, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? Facts, facts. So even to, to go back, right? You mm -hmm. mentioned Lagos, Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Right? You moved from there um, with your mom, your mom and dad, right? 
Yeah. Um, mom's from Lagos. Mm hmm. And your dad is from like a village. So yeah, your, your, yeah. your mom's from like the city and your dad's from the village. Yeah, yeah. So let's even go further back. How did they meet being from two different parts of like the the, the Yeah, country? man. Yo, so the story is kind of crazy because my dad, my dad was born before Nigeria was a country. Wow. So Nigeria became a country 1960. Okay. My pops was born before that. Mm -hmm. And he he grew up in, a, in, in the village, like the real village with you know seven siblings kind of vibe you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah. my pops was the first person in his family to leave nigeria and he went to he went to france okay he went to france to do to go to school and after that he found his way to canada he went to concordia mm -hmm. in montreal and he did that all on his own and uh, after he finished school, he moved back to Nigeria and he met my mom. Ah. And um, yeah, and that's that's how it went down. And they had you and brothers and sisters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And were your brothers and sisters also born in Nigeria? Um, yeah, every single one of us was born in Nigeria. Um, I had an older brother who was born in France, but he passed away, but- um, R.I.P. But everyone else, Nigeria. Okay, so then the whole family moved from Nigeria to Toronto. Yeah. Okay. So before the Brampton move, what part of Toronto did you guys move to? So. And what was that experience like? Cause I, and how old were you around that time? So it's a three part question I say. Absolutely. So actually the first time I moved to Canada, I moved with my dad. It was just mm. me and him. Okay. And uh, I was nine years old. Uh, we moved to Ottawa. <laughs> Uh, we stayed yeah. in Ottawa for like maybe like eight, nine months before my dad could get like on his feet a little bit to mm -hmm. make, you know, some money to get his own place. And then he said, we're going to go to Toronto. And we moved to Toronto. We moved to Keel and Shepherd. Okay. West End. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Keel and Shepherd. Um, yeah. And then the rest of my family came. Okay. That year. And we all lived together in a, in a, in a, in a in two bedroom apartment. Wow. And there was... Yeah, there were six of us in there, but you know, we made it we made it happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Keel and Shepherd, man, like it was it was it was dope, man, because you know, on Keel and Shepherd is is uh right across from, you know, Jane and Shepherd. Mm -hmm. And then from Jane and Shepherd you go north, you go to Finch. Yeah. Right. And then that Finch, that Finch Street, there's mad African stores mm. and restaurants and churches so we really had a community when yeah. we moved here you know what i'm saying yeah like even on eddie stone and finch there's a there's a um there's a nigerian restaurant that i used to go to i still go there okay you know what i'm saying yeah. so yeah it was it was really a good place for us to have our community you know what i'm saying yeah because it was like you know you had the africans you had the uh you had the jamaicans mm -hmm. you had the brown people you know what i'm saying it was like mad immigrants that square it was, it was yeah. wild so yeah it was kind of blessed though so when did you guys move to Brampton? Like how many years was that bef did you guys stay there before moving to Brampton? Um, we were just there for like a year and a bit. Okay. Um, my pops, my pops, he had a, he's a man of faith. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think at the time they were doing this thing where you could get a home for mad cheap. And he was like, I'm going to scramble up everything that I can and do this. Yeah. And he really moved by faith and he made it happen. Okay, so yeah. the whole family moved over to Brampton, mm -hmm. right? And then that's like when the high school life and started, like, yeah. that started, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You're a tall mother, bro. Yeah, facts. Right? <laughs> so there's no way that you weren't balling when you were young. Yo, you know it's crazy. I didn't get tall until like 11, 12th grade. Really? I didn't. I didn't. You had so the I growth spurt. Mad late, bro. So mm. I wasn't. I wasn't even hooping. I was playing. I was playing soccer. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was playing soccer and then I was just <laughs> I was just rapping, bro. So all that all that basketball shit, it was never for me, bro. Like man's man's just learned how to really ball yeah. at like 17. You know what I'm saying? So you got into the music from young young? Like when was would you say that you first really started getting interested in making music? Or like actually let me rephrase this question. Yeah, yeah. When did you start getting interested in music, period? Like noticing that there's music. 
Big salute to the sponsors, Diamond Club, with delivery all over the GTA and now all across Canada. They got the best selection of flour, edibles, and pens, and all types of goodies that you need. You can find them on their Instagram page, Diamond Club underscore Canada, or you can find them on the 7 Days of Weed app as well as the Leafy Things app. Let them know that you heard about them through the We Love Hip Hop Network, and they may give you a discount. Big salute to Diamond Club. Cheer! Bro, since the first moment that I heard it, mm. the very first moment that I heard a song that I remember, I was watching this movie, um, <clears throat> Tarzan. Okay. The, the animated. Yeah. And there was a clip in there, I'll never forget. There was a clip in there of Tarzan. You know, Tarzan is an orphan mm -hmm. and he gets adopted by the apes. Yeah. There was a scene in there where the mother ape was like, I will actually take you as my son. Mm -hmm. And then a song played. It was Phil Collins. You'll be in my arms tonight. Mm. I'll never forget. That was the moment it clicked. I'm like, I love this. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, and I was like, I was probably like five, six years old, but okay. I remember it vividly. That's dope. Yeah. And, and in the household, I'm sure you're hearing a tapestry of different music playing, right? Facts. So give me some, some of the the vibe that you might hear like on a Sunday evening or Sunday afternoon, like when your mom is cooking and stuff. Yeah. So we, so in, in Nigeria, we listen to a, a sound called Fuji music. Okay. So we listen to Fuji, you know, we listen to, um, high life, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if you heard of Fela Kuti. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. Lagba ja, uh, sunny a day. Those are, those are the sounds that infused in the, in the crib. Mm -hmm. But then we also listen to mass soul music, like, okay. you know, Teddy Pendergrass, you know, Aretha Franklin, um, uh, what's, 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 uh, Al Green, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, and that was what my dad liked okay. a lot. And I didn't get introduced to hip hop until I was about seven. My cousin put me onto DMX. Ooh. Yeah. He put me on a DMX. And from that moment, yes, R.I.P.X., man, for real, because X was my favorite rapper for the longest. Which album were, did he put you on to? The Darkest Hell is Hot? It's or? Dark and Hell is Hot. Ooh, yeah. Good choice. Yeah, yeah. So X, you know, I remember I, I used to rap to to, to Slipping all the, um, a lot. You know, X mm -hmm. going to give it to you, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man, X, X had a huge impact on me growing up. Yeah. So... That helped you, I would, I would imagine, with your lyricism, right? Listening to, like, the spitters, right? That's a fact. But you sing as well. And yeah. you sing not like just a rapper who could just hold a tune. Like, you can, like, do either one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah. which one did you start with, the singing or the rapping? So it's wild because, so when I moved to Toronto, mm -hmm. um, we used to go to a church called Christ Apostolic. And my brother was the choir master. Okay. So... He put me in the choir and I loved it because it was all girls. I was the only guy mm, in the choir. Sick us. Yeah, it was fire still. So that's when I started singing because, and they were motivating me. I got to be honest with you, the, mm. the, the, the women in there, because, you know, I could hit this falsetto note that a lot of people couldn't hit. Mm. So that's where I really started doing that. Yeah, yeah. And then, shit, yeah, I'm just like, as, as an adult artist now, I'm like, yo, I can do this thing. Shit, let me let me add it to my to my whole repertoire, you know. Okay, and that's that's what it is. So, when you first started recording, now mm -hmm. when you went in there, did you go in there with the? I guess I'll call it a hybrid, the both of the rapping and the singing, or did you lean on one? Nah, I was just rapping at first, bro. Okay, yeah, I was just rapping because you know I, I was in high school, you know, singers. You're not really getting love in high school as a yeah. singer, at least back then, you know, you know, unless you're just singing a gal all day. But mm. no, nah, I was just rapping because I used to freestyle. I used to freestyle battle, man. So um, it was about I was just I used to listen to mad, you know, East Coast rappers, you yeah, know, people yeah. who, whose pens were just stupid. You're just like disgusting. on Jada Kiss and all of them. What? Yeah, yeah, Jada, yeah. Fab, you know, Andre 3000, Hope, mm. Nas. Cool G, yeah, you know, hard shit. You mm -hmm, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, like people who really mastered the pen. You yeah, know? multi syllabic, as they say. Yeah. One thousand yeah. cannabis. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So your first set of music is 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 straight rapping. Straight. When did you start infusing the singing? Um, I think probably when I was getting into my late teens, mm -hmm. and I was like. You know, I could make music that 
women like. Mm. I could make songs that would get them excited. You know what I'm saying? What was her name? <laughs> <laughs> well, what were their names? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, you know, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Women motivate men. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not, they shouldn't be your primary motivation, but they do motivate us to be better. You yeah. know what I'm saying? If we, if we do it right. Yeah. So yeah, that's what it was. And I was like, dang. And when the, the girls were like, yo, we really like this song. Why you sing? I'm like, all right, cool. So let me actually work on this mm -hmm. and get really, really good at it and practice it properly. And now, you know, like I said, uh, I body your favorite rapper at the end of the morning and sing your baby girl to sleep at the end of the night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gotta throw a sound effect on that Trust one right me. there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so let's even like, be like outside of the rapping, mm -hmm. um, actually no, let's stick with the rapping. Okay. Yeah. When did you realize that you were nice? Ooh. Because there's a point where like, you're just doing it and your your people might be like, yo, that's good, that's good. Like, yeah. that, right? But then when you listen to it and you're like, you listen to, listen to it in comparison to like your favorite rappers and you're like, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, something here. Right, right, right. Yeah, that type of, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to tell you something. The first time I ever rapped in my school, mm -hmm. I was trash. I got booed. I battled this man. We probably did like six rounds. I lost all six. Mm. She was crazy. She was nuts. So that was the biggest L I ever took in my life. So yeah. I went back home and I said, I'm never going to lose like this again. It's impossible. Um, so I just got, I just started working on my shit. You know, mm -hmm. you know, if you've seen Dragon Ball Z, when Goku gets in the hyperbolic um, time chamber, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was one of those. So I just really locked in and then um, I found all these groups online of people who were just rapping. Mm -hmm. So that's when I got into it. But the moment that I knew I was nice was when I did this freestyle over Fabulous and this rapper named Freck Billionaire. Okay. They had this song called um, I'm Getting Money. Mm -hmm. and, I rap and I wrote 50 bars on there, 50 bars. And I got an email from Animal Steel, who was managing Freck Billionaire wow. at the time um, with Street Fam. Okay. And he was like, yo, we fuck with you. We want to get you on on the, on our crew. Yeah. The crew at the time was called Cloud Gang. Um, but then I was like, oh, these are my fucking, you know, these are, I respect these guys' lyrics. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's when, that's when it really like locked in for me. Okay, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's dope, man. And and before we delve even deeper into the music, I want to talk about some of your your work, even like working with youth in the system and stuff like mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. Um I seen one thing, Rise Entertainment, right? Yeah, yeah, edutainment, yeah. Now, is that the the main one that you that you work with? Um so and how did you get into that in the first place? Absolute, yeah. absolute. So basically what happened was I started so I, so I went to school. Mm -hmm. I went to school um, for biology. Wow. Yeah. I went to school for biology. While I was in school, I was rapping the whole time. At the end of my school, I started volunteering at a mental health center in Guelph. Wow. And I was doing that work and it really hit me, bro. It really hit me that people are going through every day. Mm-hmm. And we don't even realize it, right? Because they keep it inside, they yeah. keep it tucked. So I finished school. I didn't know what to do with my life. You know what I mean? Um, I knew I wanted to be an artist, but I also knew I needed to provide for myself too. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I already have this mental health experience right here. Let me apply that to youth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I was able to get a full-time job you know, and, and work um, as a youth mental health worker in, uh, in Toronto, in the annex, Midtown. Wow. And working with youth that were crown wards, youth that, you know, may have had issues at home. And that area is kind of, can get kind of crazy in that area. Um, yeah, I mean, no, it's not, it's not that bad. In the annex? Yeah, annex, like DuPont and Ting, it's not that bad. Okay, well. Because they, they moved them. Um, they moved them away. Yeah. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They moved them away to a place where 
they don't have to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Okay. So, but it was a it was a great job, man. That job really changed me as a person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it really did. Yeah. Now, let me even ask you with that as a layer, right? Mm -hmm. Did that add on to you musically? Like, once you start getting back into the booth or getting back to the pen, are you finding different things coming out of your mind? Yes. Yes. It transformed me, bro. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, yo, now I have a job to do. You see, you feel yeah. me? Because I seen these youth <clears throat> and, you know, I, I never want to be patronizing. I never want to tell anybody how to live their life. I never want to tell anybody, you know, that my way is the right way. Right. <clears throat> but I seen the youth and I seen a lot of the things that would help them. And that's words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. Words that make you feel powerful. Words that boost your self-esteem, your self-concept. You understand? Yeah. So I, put, I keep that in mind when I write my lyrics. You know why? Because when you listen to anything, whether it's an audio book, whether it's a speech, even if you're not taking in what's happening right there, mm -hmm. it's planting a seed inside of you subconsciously. You understand? Yeah. There's power in the words. There's power in the words. So I don't play with the word, man. I don't play with the word. I glance over every line mm -hmm. over and over and over again. No words are wasted. Not at all. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, shout out to the youth. That job, if it wasn't for that job, I don't know if I would have that kind of intention. So I'm, I'm writing down for the, for the title of this episode, Power of the Word. Uh, Shit powerful is powerful right it's there. It's powerful, man. It's powerful. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm, 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 I'm loving the game that you're dropping right here, bro. I got, I got some questions for you here. Let's um, get it, brother. Let's do some like association here. I, I'm going through some slides or a slide post that you put up on your Instagram. Right. This is from April, 2021, April 1st, 2021. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ask you about different things in this slide and what it means to you. Okay. Miss Education of Lauren Hill. Whew! One of the greatest albums of all in time. Facts. Yes. And 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 that is an album that that needs to be revisited over and over for generations because mm. what she's saying over there is still relevant till this day. It's still relevant. So to this day. <laughs> yo, that's yo, for real. So miseducation. Man, you just saying that gave me chills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, shout out to Lauren, Miss Lauren Hill, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Salute. Aquemini. <laughs> okay. So Aquemini, I found that album late. Okay. Yes. And so, that's outcast for the people who live under a rock, okay? Yeah. It's their third album. Yeah. So Aquemini. Um, yeah, like I said, I found it late because um, I wasn't as tuned in at the time, mm -hmm. right? Because that album came out in, I think, like 97 or 96. Yeah. You know, I was a baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, as an adult, just learning more about the kind of music that I wanted to make, mm -hmm. I was like, these guys are actually the prototype because they're unique. They don't give a f about anything. Yeah. They represent themselves how they want to represent themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not about what you want. And, you know, that shit really inspired me. And, of course, you know, the lyricism of, of Andre and Big Boys yeah. unmatched. And the melodies, man, skew it on the Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. Skew it on the Barbie, spotty yaddy do I ain't trying to lose. <laughs> man. Um, the Voodoo album Voodoo. by D'Angelo. Mm-hmm. Voodoo. So Voodoo is an important album to me because as an R&B album, it's a gangster album, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I always thought D'Angelo was like a gangster singer. You feel me? Yeah. He was doing an R&B, but it was so gritty. It was so real and raw. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like, you know, I love you, baby. You know, yeah. let's get into it. It was like, yo, devil's pie. Devil's you pie. Know? Yeah. And, and that's, my, that's my lineage of music. Mm -hmm. I call it unapologetic soul music because yeah. it's like, it's just raw. It's, yeah. it's honest, you know? So voodoo, voodoo's up there for me. And, um, and fun fact, I, on the game's album, Born to Rap, mm -hmm. I re-sang D'Angelo's Devil's Pie for, for his song, on on uh Carmen Electra. Yeah. Um that's the second time that you and Game linked up on a tune. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get to the first time. 
Well, yeah, I'm no gonna stress. save that. I'm gonna save that because that was no a stress. special moment for me. Oh, where? Right? Okay, okay. So I'm gonna save that. <laughs> I got one more slide here. That's okay, good. there's a few other slides that you have as far as album influences, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and for the caption for the people who um want to know on Instagram, it says, "I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for you." Mm -hmm. Right? And these are all the different albums that are in the slide. Mm -hmm. The one that I'm gonna um, name last year, "What's Going On," Marvin Gaye. <laughs> What's going on? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, Marvin Gaye to me is, he's the prototype. Mm -hmm. He's the prototype of being a singer, but not it, not being fluffy. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Not being like just weird and soft. Mm -hmm. It's honest, it's brutal, it's raw, but it's also sweet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, what's going on for me that's another album that I got to later in my life. Mm -hmm. And I think I got to it at the perfect time because it really hit me. You know, he was talking about life in America, but not just America, but in the world, period. Yeah. And it was the sign of the times music, you know? He's talking about wars, you know? He's talking about, um, you know, um, trying to send people to the fucking moon mm -hmm. when people can't eat. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He's he's critiquing the he's critiquing the establishment. Yeah, he's doing social commentary in his music as an R and B singer. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Come on, he was ahead of his time, man. Ahead. Yeah. So that you know, shit, that shit just gave me chills too right now because you know that's powerful. Yeah. Rest in peace, Marvin Gaye, man. Rest that, in is, peace. that is that. That is that is the album. <laughs> yeah, man. And and it makes a lot of sense when I go through these list of albums as far as like for you, mm -hmm. when I hear your music, because mm -hmm. then I, I can hear all the different influences now when I go through this little slide, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's so dope. Yeah, thank you, bro. So continuing on here, right? One day I'm listening to, I think it was the California Republic album or mixtape, mm -hmm. right? And... I was on to you early. That's when I realized in hindsight that I was on to you early. Right, right, right. Because I'm like, wait a minute. Isn't this guy from Canada? <laughs> right, right, right. Because I'm listening to the game album or the game mixtape. It was a mixtape or something. Was it a mixtape or an album? Um, it was the California Republic that shit. you were on. I don't, I don't even remember, bro. But I heard you rapping on one of, one of a, a feature on one of the tunes with a couple of other guys. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So with Mozzie, Osby Chill, and Game. Yeah, so that was on his album, Born to Rap. Okay, no, yeah. before Born to Rap, before bro. Born you were rap. on a feature before Born to Rap. Unless yeah. you don't know about it. You know what? A song or two might have leaked from the sessions mm. that I was doing with him. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Because, yo, that guy records like a beast, bro. How and, long ago did you meet Game? Um... 2019. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So I need to go backtrack to what mixtape you put out in 2019. Yeah, for sure. And then I you appeared on the, the album, the Born to Rap album. Yeah, yeah. But I had already expected that because of the feature that I heard earlier. Right. So it might have, I mean, also, there's also mad mixtapes out that, <laughs> Unofficial mixed Yeah, the yeah. man didn't even sanction, you yeah, know, so yeah. it could have been that. Um or also he he did come on uh my remix for a song I put out called City Blues. He was on there too. So mm, you this know, is true. It could have been true. that one too. But I don't know. So how how did you get that like link up with the game? The game is a big time fucking rapper, bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. to like to to link up with early, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it just happened right after I put out my first single. Mm. Um, I put out my first single um, with my with the label at the time okay. uh, called Same Plate. And um, it got somebody sent it to game. It was the pool of liquor um, after that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That song. Okay. And, um, and uh, he just hit me on Instagram. Wow. And he said, bro, you know, I'm working on my album. Come to LA like right now. And I was like... I'm out of here. <laughs> Yo, that's I booked sick. my flight same day. Yo, that's so sick. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Nah, it was tight still. It was tight. That's dope, man. Mm -hmm. And and you get into the model. You got into modeling too, right? Yeah. Oh, you're into you're you're currently modeling. 
Yeah, bro. And the only reason I really got into modeling, to be honest with you, is because mad people were telling me to do it for years. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nah, you know what I mean? I'm an artist. Yeah. I'm not a model. And then, um, you know, somebody approached me one more time to do this campaign. And I was like, you know what? Let's let's just fuck around and find out. So I found out and and that was part of my job. So give so, thanks. So biggest campaign you feel you've done so far? So far? Um, whoo. I think there's two that come to mind. Mm -hmm. One, I did one with uh with this brand called Frame, mm -hmm. which was which was crazy. Um, I was in their lookbook and everything, which was which was kind of dope. Um, and most recently, I did one with Kenzo. Yeah, I seen that one, which was crazy. Yeah, because that one was by faith. I moved by faith on that one. Okay. Um, the stylist was like, "Yo, I think you'll look real dope in these clothes. You want to mm -hmm. try a thing?" I was like. Yeah, let's do it. And then we put it together and she sent it and Kenzo was rocking with it heavy. And they're like, yo, we're going to, you know, share this and, you know, work with it too. I was like, yeah, let's get it, man. That's dope. So, you know, that my philosophy is I'm going to try, I'm going to try something if it aligns with me. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, if it aligns yeah. with my spirit. So that's it. No, that's dope, man. Thank and, you, bro. And and to broaden the conversation, even like with you as you're, you're continuing this music game, right? You you had the label that you put out the pool of liquor with before, right? Yeah, right. Um, you invited me last year to a listening session, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, for the Panic album. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And this is over at the Sony Studios. Yeah, yeah. So tell me how that came to fruition. Absolutely. So after I was with Same Plate, mm -hmm. which put out um, City Blues and yeah. my first album still, um, the label got absorbed by RCA Records. Uh, yeah, so currently RCA RCA is going to put out my next album. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and RCA, yes, yeah, the Sony um, conglomerate. Yeah, one of the, Sony RCA, they like, yeah, they yeah, like yeah. sister labels. Okay, yeah. okay. So now being in that system, right? Yeah. Before getting into that system, were you like, I want to be an indie artist, I want to be indie, and then the label thing came along, or were you like always looking to get a deal? Um, no, I wasn't always looking to get a deal. Nah, because I was doing the independent thing for years. Mm -hmm. You know, doing the tune core, distro kid, all that. Yeah. Um, and then we used this one called STEM, which was cool. But there was a there was this guy at Sony. Mm -hmm. His name is Jonathan Master. By far one of the realest industry people that I met to this day. And he's like, yo, I really like your music. You know, I see something in you. I think you're a special artist. And I was, and, and, and the first time we met, we walked in New York mm. for two hours, bro. This is a exec. Yeah. We were walking and we walked and we got these sandwiches at, at this um, deli thing. And, and he had like a hoodie on. There was no suit. He had a hoodie on, jeans, chilling. Yeah. And I was like, there's something about this guy, man. There's something about this guy that, I really respect. And to this day, you know, he's been solidly in my corner. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, even though it wasn't what I was looking for, a deal, because I was doing it independent, it just made sense. Yeah. Yeah, it just made sense. So, and, we, he, you know, we just been, you know, just running it through since then. And, yeah, I'm going to take it to the take it to the stratosphere with this. So, that's no, where that's we're dope. at. That's dope, man. And, and how do you feel that your music has developed over the years now that you've you know, you, you, you're becoming more seasoned fam. You've been popping up at the Juno awards. Yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like you're collecting more data. Yeah. What did that look like now when you go into the booth? Like what's, what's your process? Is it like a more flowed process where you just go in there and just drop it now? Or is it, are you still very calculated? No, I'm pretty, I'm, it's a mix of both, bro. Because freestyling is what I started doing. Okay. You know, freestyle off top, you give me a beat, I'll, I'll rap on it for like half an hour. Mm -hmm. But it's not just about that. You know, when the songwriting process, I'm learning now more from other songwriters, other producers, yeah. you know, that are that I trust and are seasoned because songwriting is a whole art form. You know what I'm saying? It is. You can't just be good at rap and make songs. You can't just be a talented singer and make songs. It's an art form and... and and I've, I've had to study, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I've had to study and be diligent. So, you know, 
my essence is still there, but I'm learning now more how to craft a record. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, man. Um, And just the last few questions that I have for you now, right? Mm -hmm. With everything that you've done and like, I'm talking about from Canada to moving around in the States, right? Modeling, all these different things. What do you feel is one of your biggest accomplishments so far? Ooh, biggest accomplishment, eh? And I'm going to say, I say, I'm going to reemphasize so far because you're just like still in the beginning of the tunnel, bro. That's you got a, so much more, bro. That's a fact. Yeah, man. That's a fact, man. And you know what, bro? It's tough for me to answer that question. I got to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to be honest with you because I'm such a forward looking person, you know? Yeah. And, but I will say though, I count, I count my W's. It doesn't matter how small it is. Mm -hmm. I count them. Um, but I'm always like, I'm counting this W as we proceed. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can I honestly can't give you a really good answer for that right now, to be honest. Um, Cause there's been so many highlights, you know, I think doing a show in Toronto right before the pandemic was one of those highlights, mm -hmm. seeing my people in the room. Um, and I can't wait to do another Toronto show. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's going to be, that will probably be the next highlight. No, nah, fam. We're, we're waiting to see you back on the stage over here. Bro. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, going to be mad. <laughs> no, nah, man. Toby in the building. Um, the panic album, I'm, I was looking for it. It's not out yet. It's not out yet. No. When is that dropping, bro? It's dropping this year. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that's that session that I was listening to those tunes, bro. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh man, he yeah. got one right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this year. You know, are you adding on to it? Is there more features? Fam, I've been adding on to it. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, some of the features on there are crazy. There do just do you tell possibly a couple of them, maybe? Um I mean, I don't know if everything's cleared yet. I don't want to get you in that's trouble. The, that's the thing, right? It's like some of it's not cleared. Yeah, so yeah. So if I'm coming on here like, oh, yeah, I got this man on my album. And then album day, you like, I don't see that nigga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to look crazy. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I might hold off on 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 the saying the features for now. Mm -hmm. But um, but it's like hard, like hard people, you know? Yeah. Like I really, I've really, I really pride myself on who I work with. You know what I'm saying? And I only want to work with the best people that I respect, mm -hmm. you know, their artistry. So, yeah, that's all I can say. Well, listen, man, I feel like when it's time, we're going to get what it's supposed to sound like. Yeah, you know what I'm fact, saying? Yes. And, and good things take time. Amazing things take time. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But I'll, I'll make sure you know. I'll make sure you know. Don't worry. Yeah, man. Let me I get an you. early preview again, yeah, bro. Yeah, please. Yeah, I got you. Right? And and to give some game to the audience before we get out of here. For right? sure, yeah. Because you've gotten to move around and do a lot of things, right? What's one of the biggest things that you've learned along the way? The biggest things that I learned along the way. There's a man, there's there's a lot of things that I've learned. Yeah. Um you know, Socrates, Socks, um, Sox. I would consider him a mentor of mine at this point. Um, he's really put me onto a lot of game mm -hmm. and he's been very generous <clears throat> with that. And one of the most important things that I take from him is no matter how far you think you're pushing it, you could push it a little further. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You could push it a little further. And 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 I take this shit serious. You know, I take this art form serious mm -hmm. because if I don't, if we don't, what does it do for the rest of the people who are participating in it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got to keep the bar high. We got to keep raising the bar high so that everybody that comes into this thing called hip hop knows that there's a standard yeah you feel me yeah it's a standard we can't let the standard die we can't let the standard drop it's got to be pushed because then that brings all of us up collectively yeah you know what i'm saying so that's one of the most important things and two don't sleep on nobody mm. don't sleep on nobody 
You don't know what anybody is capable of. You don't know what anybody's trajectory is. You don't know what the universe has in store for the person who's walking right past you. So yeah. don't sleep. Yeah. You feel me? Especially yourself. No, that's real game right there. <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> the boy, the boy told me open up the jewelry store right there and gave some free jewels to the people right there, man. Whenever you need. Yo, listen, I really, really enjoyed this conversation. I feel that, you know, we got to learn a lot about you in this right here. Yeah, and, yeah. And when I hear the songs, a lot more things make sense now. <laughs> right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? I really appreciate you sharing this with us. Absolutely, man. Hey, listen, I appreciate you, man. Just, you know, first of all, showing love, but also doing like the proper, you know, you know, research. Because I feel like some people don't do research, which is crazy to me. Come it's on, crazy man. to me. You got to do research. You got to do it. You know, come on. No, nah, man, I take this as serious as, as you as the artist and any of the artists that I talk to. Yeah. I, you know, as serious as you guys take your craft of making music, doing these interviews and, mm -hmm. and making sure that the audience gets to know y'all better. I'm yeah. serious about that. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I could tell. I yeah, know it. And, I know it. And, and, and I appreciate you sharing with us. And one thing I just want to mention also in this interview, the fact that you said when you first started dropping your shit, you wasn't nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that self-awareness because a lot of people won't be lying to me. They'd be like, I was nice when I first started. Like, stop the cap, bro. Oh, you know stop the five. That's super cap, man. Yeah, man. That's super cap. Nobody was nice when they first started. It's you literally impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. Stop, stop lying. You weren't nice out the gate. Yeah. No, when you said that, I was like, this self-aware motherfucker, bro. Yeah. yeah, it's the truth. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, man. Um, what what do you got coming up next? Oh man, what do I have coming up next? Like I said, I got these shows. The shows. So, oh, listen, listen, listen. Album coming out this year, crazy. It's gonna it's gonna break the simulation in half. Mm. I'm telling you that much. It's that that's the that's the energy we put behind this. Shit. Dope. Um, and then my Toronto show. I want to see all you motherfuckers in the crowd for that Toronto show because it's going to be crazy. Yeah. yeah and and can we get a, there's a date coming up on the show or do we have a... I don't have a date yet, nah, but just tap in, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, okay. just tap in. Listen, either, either end of this year or top of next year, but tap in. All I know is once that ticket, that ticket um, link drops... It's a sold out thing. Though. Trust me. You know trust saying? me. Yeah. Yo, Toby in the building. Um, you can find him on on Instagram uh, at Sincere Toby. Yeah, Sincerely um, Toby. Sincerely yeah. Toby. Yeah. Um, wh what about any other like social media platforms or anywhere else you want people to find you and stuff? Absolutely. So every single social media platform, it's Sincerely Toby. Okay. And I'm working on a website right now. It's going to be a portal for everything that I put that I release going forward. Dope. Everything. It's called Panic FM. Mm. Yeah. Panic FM. Panic FM. Panic album coming soon. Ooh, it's going to be serious. So Yo. I'm going to do a soft launch um, where a few people will get access to it and mm -hmm. play around with it first before I open it to the rest of the rest of the world. Um, Panic FM Yeah Panic FM Looking forward to it My um, Let me give a quick salute To my sponsors Before we get out of here Big salute to the sponsor Diamond Club Deliveries all over the GTA And all over Canada Hit them up on their Instagram page Diamond Club underscore Canada I'll have the information For everything in the descriptions As well as the links For Toby and his music I'm going to take us back To a track with um, From back You know when this thing first started off. We love hip hop. Love hip -hop. Hip -hop.